So this is going to be a real short uh, webinar on motor control. We're going to do uh, basically three things. We're going to drive the motor with joystick and drive system. We're going to have motor control using buttons. We use nested loops. And then again, motor control of buttons using a, a, a select switch. Now the assumptions I'm making is that motors have been properly set up and begin, properly closed and finish. Uh, we're not going to use sensor values in this video. Look at uh, controlled motion uh, or state machines for that. But there will be other details in periodic task VI. So uh, this is a lead into both of those discussions. All right, we're looking at the periodic task of our program. And as we discussed in joysticks, we've picked up the joystick from this pipe in the top loop. This is loop A. And we've expanded and indexed the array for the uh, axis, the joystick axis, and expanded the array for buttons. And so these are all robot global variables. And we're using robot global data to store the joystick X value, the joystick Y value, button 1, 2, 3, 4, and 7. And uh, we're about to use them now. So this is all in joystick uh, excuse me, in the loop A, which is the first while loop in periodic task. In the second loop, we're going to reduce the time that's delayed, the, the delay time, to 50 milliseconds. And we're going to expand this out a little bit. But from this pipe, we knew that the joystick was included, so that's what we used the pipe for in the upper loop. We know the left and right drive motors are included in the pipe, so that's what we're going to expand here. This is an unbundled by name. We get it from the um, class, cluster, and variant menu, and it's the first icon in that menu. So if we unbundle by name, hook it up to the pipe, we'll see that we have one of the selections we have. If you use the white knuckle fist, uh, icon, is this joystick and the other is a robot drive all elements. Next thing we want to do is, is use the uh, arcade drive under our WPI robotics library. We're going to pin it and open up the drive motor palette. We're going to use arcade drive, bring it down and hook it up as it is in the example to uh, the top. Now we're going to cook. We're going to look at the Teleop VI, which we've already disabled. Let me kind of reiterate that part. If we go to the project and look at Teleop VI, we want to make sure when we're using this methodology that we disable the controls that are there because we don't want to have two things controlling the drive system. And so as we look at this, we go into right-click, Program Structures. The fourth one down is Disable, Diagram Disable. We use that to draw a rectangle around all of these controls, but we don't delete it because we want to use some of this information. Uh, first of all, by using this label, Robot Drive Space Motors, with that capitalization, this will display the motor values that are coming out of our arcade icon. So I like to position this over on the right. And as I'm working on this, I copy and bring into my periodic task now that label as I write a numeric array. And then I take my motor values out of here, left click and drag, and take it into the numeric input on this icon. And now this information will be written to the driver station. OK, we want to control the drive motors with the joystick. The joystick values are up here in the global data variables. We're just going to pull one of them down. Hold down Control with a little arrow. Pull down a copy. <clears throat> if you remember, uh, all of our values are already in there. And so we just need to select the right one. We're going to right click on robot global variable, change it to read, so the terminal now is on the right-hand side, and we're going to make this top one an X 
a joystick stick X. And we take a second one. And we make it joystick Y. Now you might say, how did I know that? I knew that because I look over here at my teleop. And the way they did this is they used the top one coming out of here as the X input. And the second one is the Y input. So the first one is the joystick X. So it goes into the top value. And the second one is joystick Y. And at that point, every 50 milliseconds, uh, the joystick value gets updated every 20 milliseconds. And the motor value gets updated every, or gets touched every 50 milliseconds. Okay, now we also want to set up button control for another motor. In this case, we're going to call it the arm motor. It's already set up and begin and closed and finish. And we're going to use nested loops. And we've talked about nested loops before. We go into the program functions palette. We get the case structure. We're nesting case structures in the false case. So I draw one. And inside the false case, I draw another. And one of the buttons controls the outside case structure. And the other button is going to control the inside case structure. Now these are going to provide the numeric signals that go into my motor control. Now this motor control came from, if I go down to my robotics library and to the actuator palette, it came from the motor palette, which is separate from the uh, drive motors. So here's my, we use these to set up this channel and I'm going to set the um, control signal. So I'm going to use the set button or set output and use and set it up here, which I've already done. Now, and the reason I, I bring it in first, I want to on the output, which is the input terminal, I right click and create a constant, which will give me a zero. When both of my signals are false, when both of my uh, cases are false, in other words, I haven't pushed either button. I want my signal going to the motor to be zero. So I drag this in there, and it hooks it up for me. I'm going to bring down another copy of the ro Robot Global Data. Hold down Control with the little arrow in place. And now I want this to be button 1 and button 2. So I'm going to select button 1 and button 2. When button 1 is uh, true. This outside case structure is true. And I want my motor to run at a negative 0.6 because I've tested it. And I know that's the direction I want it to go when that button is pressed. So negative 0.6 and the speed. Excuse me, that's, so that was button 1. And now when button 2 is pressed, go back to the faults here, connect up my button for button 2. And then my second speed for the motor is going to be the reverse direction. And I want it to go the same speed, so we're going to enter a positive 0.65. Now we're going to do the same thing. I'm going to erase this and do the same thing with uh, the select switch. All right, I've erased those button controls. I'm going to do the same thing now, but instead of nested case structures, we're going to use two select switches. If I right click and go into my comparison palette, there's this icon on the third row called select. And I'm going to set it up in a daisy chain form where if I hold down control, pull it down, I want the output of the second one to be the input for the first. I want my buttons again, so I'm going to pull down a copy of the robot global data. We're going to select button two, excuse me, button one and button two. Now, obviously, I wouldn't do this. So this is an alternative to using the nested case structures. This button is going to control the bottom select. The way these work is that my, if you look at the context help for the select switch, it's right here. If I hover over it, I've got, I've got three inputs. The T is the value that's coming into the select switch when the signal is true. The S is my select signal, which is either true or false. It's Boolean. 
and then the F is a signal that's going to be selected when uh, the control signal is false. So in this case, again, I want to come start with my motor output selector. Let's get rid of my control uh, context help. I want to right click and, and connect this into my output from my motor. So again, the, the select switch knows what type of data we're going to be controlling. And then when it's false, when the button one is false, I want it to project what's coming out of this switch. And if button two is, is false, then the value that I want it to have is zero. So if neither button is pressed, both of these are false. The false signal is going to be zero numeric value carried through. And there's going to be zero control signal going to my uh, motor. Now again, when I press button one, I want this to be a negative 0.65. So I create a constant to the input to the top one. And when it's button two is true, I want to have it go the opposite direction. So I'm going to create a constant and make this a positive 0.65. And so now I have a two button control of a motor. Uh, button one will turn it at a 0.65 control signal in one direction. Button two will turn it into 0.65 the other direction. And if neither button is true, then the motor will stand still. Now the one you want to look for is uh, control uh, having motion control, which is useful for a state machine, and that's going to be in a, the periodic task as well. So uh, look for my state machine webinar or the uh, controlled motion webinar. Good luck this season.